Hello, my art friends. It's Kelly Folsom here, and welcome back to the Art Life Conversations podcast, where we are talking about all things art life, all of the challenges that we face, all of the wins, all of the the beauty that we get to have by being artists in this life. And I'm just so excited because today is episode number nine. I can't believe it. I've done nine episodes. Thank you so much to all of you for your support. Those of you who have um, is, are following the podcast, are listening to the podcast, are getting value and inspiration out of the podcast. Thank you so much to all of you who are emailing in, commenting, letting me know that these are having a positive impact on your life because that is my intention in doing this. I am not doing this just to hear myself talk, (laughs) but in hopes that I can perhaps be a voice to help other artists on their journey as well, if only to let you know that the things that you are facing, thinking, feeling that you are not alone in them and that we all do experience them along this path. Um, And so, yeah, I'm just so happy to be here with you and to be sharing this experience with you and doing this new thing of this podcast. Okay, so today, episode number nine, you know, the last podcast that we did, I talked about, you know, not being embarrassed to start small. And in this podcast, I wanted to talk about not thinking that you are small. Okay, so there's a difference between knowing that you have to start small, knowing that you are starting off small, and um, there's a difference between that and thinking that you are small. Okay, it's two different things. And if you do think that you are small and your thinking is small um, for yourself, then you will be quite limited in what you can achieve as an artist and um, quite limited your vision for your future will be so limited. And in my opinion, that is also just going to limit the impact that you can have on others um, with your art and um, just by playing full out and by dreaming big and by thinking big. Um, So I want to share this quote with you It's a very, very simple quote, (laughs) but I love it. Um, And it says, whatever you're thinking, think bigger. And I'm not going to be able to pronounce this man's name. Tony uh, Sai? Tony Sai? I'm not sure. Whatever you're thinking, think bigger. (laughs) So we all start off small. We all have to start small, but that doesn't mean that we have to think small. So we can, uh, we can, and we should challenge ourselves to think bigger and have a bigger vision for where we want to go, who we want to be, what we want to create. And in my experience, every stage of my development, I haven't always fully known what that big vision is. And Um, But I've always held like this space for the possibility of something bigger, of something, um, yeah, just bigger and better, you know, for myself, for my life. Um, And I've really worked through so many limiting, um, self-imposed limiting beliefs and limiting beliefs that I've inherited from my family, from my upbringing, from other artists that I've had relationships with over the last, you know, how many years has it been? 13 years since I've been an artist. And um, this idea of like not thinking that you are small and insignificant, I think is so important. Um, It's kind of a tricky topic to talk about because I think sometimes people maybe confuse humility with like thinking small, you know, and it doesn't mean you have to run out and like tell everybody and tell the world, you know, all of the big things that all the big vision that you have and all the big ways that you think about yourself, you know, I, I don't advise that obviously, because, um, a lot of times people don't react well to that. They, they maybe do think that you are, you know, too big for your britches and it might make them feel bad because they're playing so small, you know, like they're still 
still stuck in their limited views of themselves and of others. And so it might actually backfire to always share your big vision with everybody around you. But the important thing is, is that you have to believe in a big version of yourself and have a big vision for yourself or at least for your art. I don't really see that the two can be disconnected from one another. In my experience, the two have always been, you know, one and the same, interconnected. Um, the bigger vision that I can have for myself is also the bigger vision that I have for my art and for my artistic future. So, so we have to start small and we know so little <laughs> whenever we get started on this journey. We, we just, it's hard to see, you know, beyond where we are. It's hard to see five years from now, two years from now, three years from now. It's hard to even be able to predict what that future uh, might hold for us. But I do think it's important to not think of yourself as, even if you are starting small, as being small and being insignificant or being unimportant. You know, what, who you are, what you're doing, your desires, your dreams, your goals, things that you haven't even maybe shared with people are so important and are so so relevant you know um in working with a lot of artists online especially i've found with female artists who um, are just getting started in their art um, midlife you know uh, maybe 50 50 years old and older um, i see this show up a lot like this it's just like this belief that they are small, this attitude towards themselves that they are small. And um, obviously, as we grow our skills and our capability, then our confidence also begins to grow. And one of the things that I really try to model for um, the artists who are in my online communities is to model that, that bigness of valuing yourself, you know, knowing that you are worthy to do this, knowing that you are not small and that you matter, you know, and that your artwork matters and it is important. And that really affects, whenever you can make that shift, it really affects how you show up, it really affects how you show up at the easel, show up at, at, in the studio, because if you are thinking small and believing small things about yourself, you know, obviously that's going to make it to where, yeah, where you just don't really want to play full out, where you don't go into the studio with like full exuberance, you know, full um, inspiration and excitement. Like you'll just, if you're thinking small about yourself, you're thinking you're not worthy to be an artist or to think, you're thinking you're not worthy to even think bigger or dream bigger for yourself, you know, then it's just really constricting and it affects how we show up in our art and um, in our life. So yeah, dreaming big, having a bigger dream for yourself. And I think the longer that we are on this journey as artists and the more that we um, just push ourselves a little bit more out of our comfort zones, um, you know, and, and dream just a little bit bigger, sometimes that's all we can do is just hold just a little bit bigger of a dream for ourselves. Sometimes it's really difficult to go from this really small thinking place to, whoa, this really big, you know, impossible dream, like this big, hairy, scary dream and go, yes, I'm going to do that, you know. So um, this very, it's very unlikely that any of us are able to make that leap from you know that starting small or thinking thinking small position to thinking anything is possible and we can accomplish anything. So for me in my experience it's just been like little small small stretches into bigger thinking. It's really helpful if you have people in your life that can champion that. Um, that can help push you towards that. And I know for me, you know, one of those champions uh, for me has been uh, my partner, my boyfriend. 
um, anytime like he can he can sniff out whenever I am playing small or thinking small so quickly and anytime that he sees that that is keeping me restricted and and um, yeah anytime he senses that or sees that he always calls me out on it and I'm so grateful for that because he will always be like don't hinder yourself like you could do anything like think big dream big do it you know Um, And so it's so important to have people in your life to champion that. Um, And and sometimes it's hard to find those people, but, um, you know, it is up to us to put ourselves in situations where we can find those people. Um, I've also worked with a, it's also very helpful whenever you want to start thinking that, stop thinking that you're small and start dreaming bigger for yourself. It's really, really helpful for you to get some outside different perspectives from people, you know, um, from people who have accomplished more than you have, who maybe have been in that starting small position and have transformed and are now, you know, in a much bigger, more expansive place in their lives. Um, I also highly recommend that because for me, that's been one of the fastest ways that I've been able to um, start dreaming bigger and start and also just start recognizing my worth and my value and start um, valuing my art more and valuing myself more. You know, it's been a big key factor um, uh, on that journey. So I've worked with a variety of um, coaches, uh, a lot of which have been business coaches. Um, one specific, one coach in particular for um, my art business, her name was Alexis Fedor. And she really helped me a lot going from um, just giving me some some tangible tools and techniques to build my art business. So for those of you who maybe are interested in in uh, learning how to do that better, specifically online, I would definitely check her out. She was a huge um, influence for me in 2018. And um, working with her really helped me take some big leaps. Um, I've also worked with some other coaches. Um, Gladys, Dr. Gladys Atto was another coach that I've worked with. Um, and she was really, really fabulous. Um, she really helped um, me in terms of um, creating a bigger vision for my future. That was probably one of the first people I worked with that ever um, really got me thinking in that way. And she called it your big, scary, hairy, scary vision <laughs> for yourself. And um, so she gave us a lot of exercises and a lot of really deep, soulful, soulful work to get all of us. And a lot of us who were in there were artists, but she also worked with like writers and all different, you know, kinds of um, professional uh, creative folks in there. So she was super impactful to me as well, just helping me create a bigger future for myself, bigger vision for myself. And um, I'm just so grateful that I was able to find some of these people to work with. And so I highly recommend um, to everybody that they find somebody like that, whether, whether it's paid or not paid. You know, if you're fortunate enough to find somebody who is, um, you know, local, a peer, a colleague. Um, for example, obviously, my I don't pay my boyfriend, you know, to be my one of my biggest champions, but he is one of my biggest champions, you know, and he's always got my back and he always believes in me. And sometimes whenever I'm struggling, you know, he can hold, you know, that person, they can like hold that vision with you as well. So... Um, sometimes it is your partner, sometimes maybe it's a a parent, sometimes it might be an artist coach or a business coach or, um, somebody, a personal development life coach or something, somebody like that who you're actually paying to work with, you know, that has, um, that has a lot of experience in that area. Um, it's been one of the biggest things I've done for myself. It's really helped me grow and expand more than I ever thought that I could um, in this life. So, (laughs) but you have to have at least some little glimmer 
of hope that, or some little glimmer of knowing that there's something bigger for you and that you yourself can be bigger as well and not just be stuck in thinking small or playing small. And I think sometimes people stay in that small place too because um, they're scared, you know, because they're scared of how things are might change, how their life might change, how their relationships might change. Um, they might be scared of, of criticism. You know, obviously any time that we're, you know, as Brene Brown says out in the, the arena, um, actually doing our thing, you know, we're going to get critics. We're going to get people who are criticizing us. That's just part of it, whether it's to our face or behind our back or, you know, people are always going to have their judgments. So, um, <laughs> And it doesn't mean anything about you. It, you know, the old saying that it says more about them than it does about you is really, really true. So at this point in my life, I've really learned to kind of weed out the people who are not going to be champions for me. Um, the people who are going to talk bad about what I'm doing behind my back or judge what I'm doing. You know, I've really learned to get those people out of my um, life, out of my inner circle. You know, it doesn't mean that I won't still see them, that I won't still be, you know, friendly and polite to them and be casual acquaintances with them. But I'm really, really careful now about who I really let into my into an intimate place you know with me and one of the qualifications for that is that they really have to be a champion for me and my big vision and I am also in return a champion for them and their big vision and really for me nowadays a qualification is that they have a big vision right um the old saying of course that you become like the people that what is it the top five people that you spend the most time with um so that's something too that I've gotten really really picky about is who I'm listening to who I'm spending time with are they playing bigger than I'm playing right now? Or do they at least not think small of themselves? Do they at least believe in a bigger version of themselves and a bigger future for themselves? Um, And so that's really a qualification that I have also in my intimate friendships is that, you know, they have to possess that or else, you know, I just know that I just don't want to be surrounded by limited, small time thinking, you know, I just don't have time for it anymore. Um, And I don't think that it serves anybody to have limited, small time thinking, you know, and think small of yourself. Um, So if that's you, you know, if you're playing small, if you're thinking that you are small, Not that you're starting small, everybody has to start small, but if that's you, if you are in a place right now where you're just thinking small about yourself, you just think you're not good enough to be an artist, you're not good enough to um, wear that name tag, (laughs) a lot of times that's what it feels like, it's like, here's my name badge, I'm an artist, you know? And I know a lot of artists uh, who, they are artists because they're making art, but they don't even call themselves artists. They don't even tell people that they are artists, you know, or even that they make art. Um, Maybe they don't even share it, you know, that much with people. It's, um, they're so uncomfortable, you know, stepping into that bigger version of themselves that they just keep it small and keep it private and keep it hidden. Um, And, you know, I just think that that's not okay, that it just doesn't serve anybody. So I think it's 100% our responsibility as human beings to try to reach, you know, what what would be our full potential. You know, I think that makes the world a better place. And I don't see how thinking that we're small serves anybody um, or benefits anybody. Um, So... (laughs) if that's you if that's where you're at I'm hoping that this is helpful to you I want to see you play bigger I want to see you kind of baby step into that bigger role and again sometimes it's just a small amount of stretching beyond where you currently are at 
right now, you know. So for me, it started with, um, you know, of course, very, in the first place, just going to art school. That was the first step, and it did not feel like a baby step. It felt like a huge leap off of a cliff, and I had no idea where I was going to land. Um, but it started there, and then as I built skills and capabilities, then my confidence started to grow, and I started to you know, feel better about myself because I was really um, very, very insecure um, at the time, back in 2007, 2008, very insecure about a lot of things <laughs> from my appearance to um, my personality to um, my you know, I felt very uh, small, I felt very void, you know, in this life. And so it all started from a, this very small thinking, small place. And step by step, day by day on this art journey, you yeah, know, I kind of always say that like becoming an artist kind of saved my life, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, it was exactly the thing that I needed to step into um, in order to tran just totally transform as a human being, you know. Um, a lot of times people have to hit rock bottom and things like that before they are able to transform as a human being into a, a bigger, healthier, better version of themselves. And for me, it was making the choice to go to art school to, well, even just to sign up for that first art class, you know, that I took in uh, Massachusetts years and years ago. So, but from there, you know, every step of the way, different parts of our journey, we will need to stretch beyond what we think we're capable of. We will need to dream a little bit bigger than where we're at. We will need to think that we can be bigger than where we currently are at, even, even if we have grown tremendously, even if we've transformed tremendously. You know, my friend, there is something even greater for you and what is inside of you is also greatness is great so um, it's not like an arrogant <laughs> egotistical thing um, it's you know I think it's a very humbling process like we reach a certain level and then we go oh I thought this was big you know I thought that this was like it you know I thought this would be the greatest thing to get here and then we get there and it's like, oh my gosh, oh, now something new is opening up. This newer, bigger uh, version of myself, this bigger vision of myself is now um, opening up. So, but again, it's really hard to even be able to see that. Like whenever I first started in, in that first art class, you know, I thought, you know, I am so insignificant everybody else here is a better a better artist than me everybody else here is truly really talented i am not you know these this is kind of where i was at whenever i first started and so i was invisible you know i i played really small i was pretty invisible or tried to be invisible um, because i felt like i wasn't really good enough to be there you know um and obviously some of us are just in that place and that's where we have to get started and that's okay. Um, but I encourage you to really think about that if that's you and um, see how you can just start to believe a little bit, just a little bit more that, that you might not really be that unimportant or that insignificant. You might really actually have something um, big to give to this world. Um, have something of value to create in this life, both on the canvas and in yourself. So I can't wait to hear from all of you. Um, I'd love to hear if where you're at, both with uh, starting small and or thinking that you are small, <laughs> because I promise you, you are not. You actually have limitless potential, <coughs> excuse me, potential <laughs> inside of you. And so I would just love to hear from, um, from you. Uh, you can email me at info at artlifewithkelly.com if you want to send any of your thoughts um, on these topics that I'm sharing. Also, if there's anything in particular that you would like me to discuss or talk about, you know, anything to do with the, the artist's life, you can also email that in 
or you can leave a comment um, on the podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube or on my Facebook page, you can leave me a comment um, below and let me know um, where you're at and how this podcast, how this episode perhaps helped you. Okay, my art friends, remember, please don't think that you're small. Have, uh, hold some space, hold some space for that bigger vision for yourself and just begin to have faith in that and begin to step into that just a little bit at a time, baby steps at a time. Okay, until the next episode, I'm wishing you all happy painting. Bye.